uh, welcome to you all. Uh, this has been set up as a webinar technically, but actually was supposed to be designed more as a Q&A session for everybody. So please do feel free um, at any point to just uh, unmute your microphones and ask a question. Um, just very quickly, uh, I'll go through the uh, the sort of high level information around the um, call for proposals. Uh, and then we might just open it up and people can ask questions. So uh, the key dates, hopefully you've seen on the website. Uh, the This is the first webinar. We're having another webinar in September. Uh, we hope to be able to address uh, the questions which are on an FAQ form, which is also accessible from uh, the AIDC website. Uh, address any of those in the next version of the RFP. Uh, we haven't had any questions so far which I think will affect the RFP itself. Um, my colleague Paul Coddington is online as well and can correct me if I'm wrong there. But if you do have questions or you want some clarification, then uh, please let us know. Send us through um, a request and we'll see if we can get the RFP changed. That second version will be released in a couple of weeks. Uh, and then we have another few weeks of consultation around the uh, process with the actual RFP itself opening on the 24th of October. So we hope to have quite a short period for the RFP itself because we've had quite a long period to begin with in terms of socialising what the RFP says. Uh, if you could register your interest, we change that from a register of intent to a register of interest. Uh, there's absolutely no obligation for anyone to uh, put in a proposal at all, but if you do register your interest, then we're able to make sure that you do get the communications relevant to the RFP. Um, okay, so in very high level uh, terms, uh, the Nectar Research Cloud is an infrastructure as a service cloud with various other bits on it, uh, which has been provided by the Nectar project, part of the NCRIS uh, program. A lot of that infrastructure is now reaching the end of its life and we were successful in getting some capital to maintain the capacity of parts of that cloud. And so this process here is to make sure that we do in fact maintain that capacity. The implications are of course that, the, uh, that it's Nectar equipment. So it's not to set up new clouds, it's set up to uh, refresh of the existing Nectar um, infrastructure. So the capital needs to be part of that Nectar Federation. Uh, in addition, it has to comply with the one-to-one uh, -one co investment principles which we've outlined in the proposal. Now in that, we've described it there where we would provide, for example, 100% of the capital with the partner providing uh, an operation commitment to make sure that that infrastructure remains available for three years. We can vary that. So for example, we have um, uh, one or two partners who have in fact very recently invested in the capital themselves and it's the operation side which would be more appropriate for us to support them with there. So we can uh, blend that model a little bit but the intent is that the uh, all of that infrastructure will become part of the Nectar Federation and it'll all become available for national merit allocation. So uh, the trick there really is to ask for uh, what you need. So you'll be able to locally define organisational requirements. If uh, you can define your local, so I'm talking from the perspective of, for example, an institution, uh, if you can define your local compute requirement, requesting that amount of capital for us with an operations commitment from uh, your organisation obviously means that all of that infrastructure is being used for national merit allocation, um, but you don't necessarily need to be supporting users outside your organisation. Alternatively, uh, for organisations who want to provide a broader spread, uh, provide the amount of, uh, provide a proposal which indicates the amount of capital uh, which you're able uh, and willing to support and around which you believe you can make uh, a business model to support that operating model. So we're quite flexible in that. Uh, the original uh, Nectar proposal resulted in uh, a collection of organisations which we refer to as the nodes. Uh, they're spread around Australia and we've had some amendments in that node community over the last few years. Uh, this call is open to any organisation, so either to partner with those nodes 
or if an organisation feels it's able to put up that infrastructure um, within uh, that the time period, then they're more than welcome to put in a proposal also. Uh, the proposals will close uh, the 8th of November and we hope to have the results out to uh, applicants by the 25th of November. The contract, the draft contract, we're hoping to have through the new ARDC uh, limited company rather than through uh, a university, which has been the historical method of doing the contracting. Those contracts aren't quite ready for circulation yet, but you can see in the, in the stub contract, it has the general headings which the contracts will address. Uh, and the details, we'll hope to get that to people uh, as quickly as possible. And again, that will just be shared uh, on the website. Uh, Organisations are welcome to uh, combine together. So that applies both to our existing no community as well as new partners. Uh, combined applications are more than welcome. We can only contract with a single organisation. So some structure needs to exist to make sure that we can contract with uh, one entity through that, but uh, in terms of who's backing that entity, more than happy for there to be a range of participants uh, there. Uh, I think there's a, there's a chat section here where people are welcome to put in some questions. I might briefly hand over to my colleague Paul uh, to see if I've missed anything or if there's anything extra he would like to add. No, I think that's that's pretty much covered it. So I think we're really just looking for any questions that people might have around uh, the RFP process. All right. So Paul and I are also available for uh, anyone to communicate with. Any questions that are addressed uh, to us will go up on the FAQ. So while we won't be saying who asked the question, just in terms of transparency, we'll make sure that all of the questions do appear up there. Um, ask me anything. Yeah, you know, you're looking for any kind of domain focus from the the submissions. Uh, we're not specifically looking for a domain focus, but we could imagine that domain focus would be one of the sort of organising constructs, if you like, for people to create that model around. Um, so the original applications uh, in the first version of Nectar did have quite a strong domain focus in terms of what domain would your organisation be particularly targeting. Uh, we have less of an emphasis on that for this round. Thanks, I've warmed up. Someone else can fire a question now. Well, it would seem inappropriate for me not to ask a question. Hello there, Anne. How are you, Paul? Yeah, it's thank Mark. You. Uh, I uh, wonder, uh, given that this is now going to a, what I would refer to as a, as a retail model, you're going to potentially open up to individual institutions, and I do note my good friend uh, Andrade here on the call. Um, how do you envisage uh, working with direct direct to institution, and what are the implications, if any, for the connection, the cross connection with the New Zealand people, please? Uh, I might give that to Paul, as we have already got a couple of, uh, for example, Auckland, which might be a way of addressing both of those at the same time. Yeah, we're certainly not looking for uh, applications for this funding round from New Zealand organisations, but uh, I think the uh, the way we'd support them would be essentially the same as, as we're doing at the moment. If the New Zealand organisations wish to federate into Nectar as they do now, we uh, allow that. And if and we're trying to encourage, you know, trans Tasman collaboration. Uh, which we can do through through existing mechanisms of having projects that have New Zealand and Australian researchers uh, part of them and sharing resources in that way. But it's not expected that we would be taking an application from New Zealand organisations for, for funding. That's not allowed. <clears throat> it has to be for Australian organisations. Hi, Ian Paul. It's Kiran here. Um, it says so the intention of this to build, uh, buy and build infrastructure, or is it also to think of more of uh, the hybrid models of uh, public cloud, private cloud partnerships? Is that in your thinking as well, or is that somewhere in the future? 
so for this round the infrastructure needs to become part of the Nectar Federation so come into that same allocation and management model uh, so that does make it difficult for a whole range of the hybrid models it's predominantly we envisage um, a buy and build similar to the original implementation I mean, it's probably possibly worth pointing out that, you know, we're certainly in the future interested in looking at commercial cloud and, and public cloud, uh, but that's not what this round is about. Anybody else? We do have quite a lot of actually ARDC people on the call, um, but if there are any non-ARDC people who have a question. Well, I'll ask another one then. Uh, uh, what... Um you mentioned that the um, uh, when you talk about applying for the amount of capacity and uh, you also say uh, you say it's national merit allocated but only apply for the amount that you you want yourself um, so uh, is are you suggesting there could be self assertion of national merit i mean how, how would how would um, if people apply for the amount of capacity they need themselves how do they ensure they get that capacity? Well, they they can't. There's no guarantee that anyone will get the capacity that they ask for. But nonetheless, I think the uh, so for example, an organised an institution, a university might say we need X amount of compute capacity. Could we please get that? And we'll commit to operating that for our what are essentially their local users, but which are still national merit awarded. Uh, activities and so they fit within that guideline. In other organisations which may span multiple organisations, they could basically go through the same process and go to those member organisations and say, well, what do you envisage your demand being? We'll apply for the aggregate of all of those demands and we'll uh, create the business model around that that supports those and those members would in some form, I guess, uh, provide that operating support there so it's really a question of uh, and I mean equally an organization may say well we're not really sure how much we can support but we feel we can support multiple organizations across multiple domains um, we'd like to pitch for a certain amount of capacity which we will then try and expand the business into to fill uh, and there if the organization has the operating model behind that that can support that and providing that infrastructure is being used for again that national merit uh, activity then that's compatible with that model as well all right well that's all pretty quiet um, if there aren't any other questions did you, mark did you have anything else no, Ian, you know, you know, I'm just trying to find a way to do this thing. That's all. So, so uh, uh, yeah, my, my point being that to, to ask for the amount of capacity that someone thinks they need without being able to assure that capacity is uh, is tricky, or, or if, if not impossible. So I'm not quite sure how this works still. Anyway, thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions from anyone else on the call? Okay, good. Like I said, if you do have any questions that uh, crop up, then please feel free to give us a call. Um, and also you can send in uh, particular questions through the website. Otherwise, I feel we may have covered all the ground that's useful just at the moment. We will circulate the contracts, as I said, as soon as we've got the drafts. Uh, we'll also be putting together um, a little presentation I, to try and address some of the questions that Mark's raising as in how does that actually work in terms of fully merit allocated uh, commitment with an operations uh, component for the home organization how do you get that to work uh, in various different scenarios so we'll be putting that up fairly shortly as well if there are questions around the RFP itself, what's involved, what's in there, what are the timelines, when do things need to be made available, then please do register them uh, as part of the FAQ process. Uh, and otherwise, I think we might call that um, a day. Okay, thank you all very much.